This is the Between Extraordinary Part 21. Probably a short session today, if I had to, if I had to guess. Um, we have one remaining mystery that is, or not mystery threats, we call them in the between. We have one remaining threat, uh, which is the coven. You already have nine clues on this six complexity threat, so I think we're about ready to go on the coven. Um, but it might be helpful, uh, maybe Sarah, give us a recap on like, what is the coven's deal, what we think they're here to do, and uh, all that business. So since you're so connected to them. Um, I think that there's going to be some reveal in the brainstorming of an answer to the question here, because uh, last session, I got four of these clues, mm. just me single-mindedly uh, in my egg chair, kind of meditating yeah. in the fragrant <laughs> yeah. void. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I don't know if Victoria understands just yet uh, what the coven is up to this time, mm. but for historical sake, there have been connections. She stumbled across them last we saw in our flashbacks. She stumbled across them in the uh, bowels of their house in this stone cellar doing what looked like some ritual uh, magic with the innards mm -hmm. of a Martian. Mm -hmm. And so there's some like connection there between the dark entities and space. And we're not quite sure what yet, uh, but my aunts have been going around and entertaining the ladies of London through fashionable tarot card readings and been very quiet up until the last time I summoned them uh, to the street. So I could uh, basically, I asked them what frightens you? And we ended there with what lies to the West. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm very excited to see how this answer or question goes. I'm tempted to actually keep your, uh, the talk like on recording. I usually cut that out or at least a big part of it. Um, cause, because I think it might be interesting to see us work through it um yeah i will say that <clears throat> right now everybody is looking not too bad on conditions uh ms balakwa only has one that she can lose the rest of you just have one so um i don't know you, you, you obviously you can do the vulnerable move but it there's not a lot of pressure there i don't think and let's see what else I think the more interesting question when we look at characters is the fact that Jakob has almost no Janus mask left. Uh, Ms. Balakwa has almost no Janus mask left. Uh, let's see how Lady Florence has absolutely no Janus mask left. Lady Florence uh, cannot mark it again at all. So this could be a really interesting conclusion to the campaign, depending on how this fight goes with the coven. Um, if you all roll pretty well on answer a question, you will probably survive to fight Jazad. If you don't, there's a really strong chance that's, that one or more of you will fall to the coven before you can face Jazad. So that's my that's what I anticipate anyway, because the coven, when they're fighting hard, are really nasty. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But the last thing I want to talk about is the mask of the pig which you all have to do still i'll remind you what the prompt is here each hunter narrates a dream about the pagan swine god mock did mock demand a sacrifice of riches status or blood what did you sacrifice so be thinking of that are there any other questions before we begin we'll probably start with the with that mask of the pig um once everyone's ready to go Okay. Not a question so much, but um, if there's a window for a scene with Jacob delivering Patrick to Bedlam to rejoin his father Titus, I oh, like that. Uh, you know, tuck it in. If there's no room for it, that's also okay. You could just narrate that. I think that's that. That doesn't even feel like it needs to be a role played scene. It can be just a vignette if you want to narrate that. I think that'd be really great. So, all right, uh, right now or later, just during the day phase at some point. Just let me okay. know. Okay. Um. Okay. Great. So who wants to do the mask of the pig? I've got one for Jakob. Um, this dream is uh, oddly on Mars. I think one often associates like a swine deity with, with terrestrial earth. Uh, 
but what Jakob dreams of is uh, his Martian parents and them making a, a very deliberate choice to sacrifice their their nobility and even their entire society for the chance to get their their son off planet. Um, and in the dream, it's it's almost as though before Jazad arrives to to bombard Mars, the swine god Moch arrives and offers them this this uh, sort of diabolical bargain to to sacrifice everything rather than muster the Martian defenses and fight off Jassad. Um That they choose this almost selfish, like let's get our son out of here alive, sacrifice the entire planet for this one child, our child. Uh, and so it leaves Yaku kind of waking with the sense of guilt. Like, you know, we could have had a normal Martian versus Venus fight with all forces muster, but in the dream, my parents decided to deliberately not alert everybody. Thank you. Um, I think uh, Lady Florence's dream uh, is connected to that same moment. Um, we are, rather than being on Mars, though, there it, it's on an asteroid uh, that's sort of like, or a rock of some sort that's kind of orbiting outside of Mars. So we're sort of overlooking it. Um, and we're actually seeing the Venusians bombarding uh, Mars, uh, we're seeing waste being laid to the planet. Um, and on this asteroid, there's Lady Florence standing, watching the whole thing. Um, and there's a little piglet. And the little piglet uh, looks up at Lady Florence. Uh, and in a terrible, growling <laughs> uh, type of voice, uh, just says, you must choose. Uh, and uh, Lady Florence looks at him and says, well, my little friend, what must I choose? And the piglet turns around and uh, just like walks over the edge of the asteroid to the bottom of it. And uh, like Lady Mario Florence... Galaxy style. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and Lady Florence follows. And when she gets to the other side, there are uh, these three altars. The piglet has turned into this big brooding, like evil kind of like there's gaps in his in his body. And he's kind of like ghastly and demonic uh, uh, behind the, the altars. And we actually see um, there is... Um, um, I think it's some type of like statue, some type of thing that Lady Florence had found in her journeys. It's some type of Atlantean, like beautiful Atlantean sculpture on one of these altars. On the next one uh, is, um, uh, of course, some symbol of her status. Uh, so what would that be? I think like maybe papers, books, documents of her exploits. It's the it's the book about the. Um, uh, about the uh, uh, Wilton Davies Trench, um, all of that type of thing. And the third altar has a baby on it. Uh, and there is a dagger in front. Uh, and you hear the voice again, you must scoops. And Lady Florence picks up the knife and looks at all three and is just about to stab the baby before she wakes up. Mm, very good, thank you. Uh, Victoria's dream actually begins with a memory of her first initiation into the coven. After she discovered her aunt's secret in this sunken ancient cellar, she began to start participating in rituals and she had a cloak of her own. And she was told that this evening would be special because she would reveal, finally uh, earn her veil, so to speak and see past all of these earthly issues that she had been fretting on all of her young adulthood and finally come into her power. And we see her kind of classic stone altar. There's uh, Victoria's naked. There are a bunch of women standing around and cowls and they begin whispering and chanting. And we see the dark tendrils of Victoria's magic 
extending outward, but pointed and jagged edges as if this entire coven is now controlling the magic inside of her. And we get that really creepy uh, camera perspective from Victoria's perspective as these tendrils start to crawl up her legs and up her body and consume her. And in the dream logic, it flashes and she can see these dark entities and then the tusks of a mop, like a pig feasting at her own entrails and the blood flashes back and forth between the dark and the blood. And then she wakes in a fright. I feel like the next mastermind should be mock. Like, I feel like that should be the next thing. Yeah, there's not, there's no such thing, but it would be cool. Aiden? Aiden wasn't around for most of this investigation. So he has very little context or even understanding about why he in his dream he's back at that restaurant with jessica but all of the patrons are pigs wearing clothes like people and behind the bar there is a a larger pig staring at him with eyes like burning coals and much occurs like it did before except this time when uh obed comes out with his it was Obed, right? With the big knife? Yes. Uh, comes out with his... his uh, Obert. Big... Obert, sorry. Uh, and he swings it. It is toward Aiden this time. And it slices Aiden right from shoulder to hip. But there's no blood. Instead, his clothes and then his human skin sloughs off and falls to the floor in tatters, leaving him in his true form. And all of the pigs turn to stare, and Jessica stares, and then they start laughing. And as he slinks under the table, he knows he's lost all hope he had of humanity. And he wakes up sweaty, confused, and disturbed. Thank you. Those are great dreams. Um... Jakob, if you're ready to have that vignette with uh, the figs, I'm I'm ready to hear it. All right. Uh, Patrick was a cat, I believe, right? Is that what we decided or that was what he believed? Um, I'm, I'm trying to picture the Victorian era cat carrier. <laughs> really elaborate some like dark lace some wheels like like a bassinet that you push someone in my neighborhood my new neighborhood walks their cat <laughs> it's it's something you know they have them on a leash yeah yeah uh but i think at some point you know i guess in the morning we'll say um Jakob is uh feeling sort of i don't know at odds with himself uh over destroying um uh sally no face the prior evening realizes like you know maybe i'm a little out of control, uh, not in control of my own powers, uh, still committed to reform and justice and this idea that that no matter how villainous you are, there's a chance that you can become better. Um, and uh, he borrows or buys a uh, uh, Victorian cat bassinet <laughs> and gently cajoles Patrick to, to hop into the thing saying, you know, let's go for a, a little ride, Patrick. Um, I, I have someone I think that you'll want to see again. And uh, gives that little like, like tiny Victorian cat toy, which is probably just an actual taxidermy mouse on a piece of twine. <laughs> Pulls that into the bassinet. Patrick climbs the board. And then I roll this. Uh, I have no idea the distance to Bedlam, but I'm sure it's quite a distance. Uh, uh, roll the bassinet to Bedlam Hospital and uh, check in to uh, ask for a visit with, I think, Titus was the father's name. Titus, yeah. yeah. Um, so check in and ask to visit Titus and say, uh, you know, I, I have a family member here who uh, is in great need of care. And I think that Bedlam may be the place to visit to the doctors at Bedlam or admitting. Um, Say, you know, this person I think needs the care that only this hospital can provide. Mm. 
Very good. Uh, do you want any more? Is that that feels good to me? I don't know if you That's have any. fine. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. At this point, let's go around the table and figure out if if anybody wants to have any scenes before we. Uh, I think we probably dive right in to answer a question. I mean, if you want to keep looking for clues, you can, but I just I don't think there's any need to. Um, it's already like such a a weird esoteric uh, question to answer. I don't know if you need more details to add to it. Um, and so, uh, but we can go around the table if there's anything you want to explore in terms of your Dawn questions or something you just want to do, just you want to just see your character doing, I'm open to that. Um, whoever, uh, well, I'll just kind of go around the table, um, start with Ms. Balakwa. I am obsessively removed from Hargrave House. I have no interest in my other fellow hunters. My only task is to put my aunts in the ground or space or wherever I can. <laughs> Where we can fit them, yeah. <laughs> um, so I don't think, I think it's very, um, what was the movie? A Perfect Mind. Like there's a lot oh, of that yeah. energy oh, happening right now yeah. in her room. <laughs> yeah, I'm into it. Um, Mr. McPhee? I'm not sure. I think he would be interested in uh, if discussion of the coven has come up and and our plan. I think he would be very interested in learning what he can about this, not just this coven in particular, but this kind of magic is mm. entirely novel and and mm -hmm. exciting. I think you're going to so get a be... first hand opportunity to learn about it pretty soon. So, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um. I'm. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. Um, if you're interested in triggering one of your information, or like, because doesn't your the repair of the pelt have to do with like gathering information? Isn't that kind of how it works? Yes, uh, when I learn something about it, through a move. Oh, I like, oh, through a move. Oh, interesting. Um, I think probably it could be answer a question, right? I mean, theoretically, you could learn something about it when we do answer a question and then and then trigger the move, if that makes sense. I don't have the move in front of me, but um, that might be sure. that might be the right way to go. Um, so it sounds like you're going to be learning about them through your fellow hunters. So I think that makes the most sense. Um, Lady Florence? Yeah, I don't know. Like, I think with Lady Florence, we'd just sort of like see a montage of her and Sally No Face uh, yeah. hanging yeah, out going? about town, <laughs> uh, heading to the the surgical academy, and uh, Sally No Face training uh, Lady Florence in some um, knife wielding uh, activities and that type of thing. Um, but I think that like <clears throat> maybe Lady Florence is you can even see like in this montage that she's getting kind of bored of it, like she's. Mm -hmm she's sort of like figured it out and maybe like there's even signs that she's like advancing in skill beyond mm -hmm. Sally no face as far mm -hmm. as this is concerned. Um, she doesn't have quite the same sadism, but um, um, skill wise is getting there. Um, and so I think she's maybe like drifting a little bit more towards the resplendent again. Um, that maybe all of this like training with, uh, the slugger training with Sally, no face, that type of thing has been a way to distract her from this uh, cloud that is hovering over the city of London. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think for whatever it's worth, I think that she's kind of like poking and prodding a little bit more closely to that. Yeah, interesting. I think it's probably one of those situations where, I mean, at this point, the Venusians have not they're not completely integrated in london society but they're they're becoming more omnipresent i mean you mm. see them around a lot more um jazad doesn't even stay in resplendent anymore he's 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 shacking up with the queen in in buckingham palace and i think yeah, if you have if you have like a particular goal in mind, I'm open to hearing it and I'll give you a scene on Resplendent. But otherwise, I like the idea of you just kind of refocusing, you know, and sort of. Yeah, I don't think I have a goal at this point, but I yeah. will like okay. note if there's like something that 
comes up. I mean, hopefully, kind of hopefully a vengeful Ad- uh, Atlantean doesn't come take you out before. Oh, well, that's uh, yeah. <laughs> before you have a chance to, there to is re- that problem to resolve things, which is odd. Yeah, um, Mr. Walsh. Yeah, I've got two ideas. Uh, yeah. Conversations. Um, one with Lady Florence. We haven't really had a direct conversation about parentage yet. Mm, okay, I'm I brought that. up yeah. this dream of Mok and my parents. Didn't mention what my mom looked like in the dream. <laughs> uh, uh, I love that scene. Yeah, do we want to have that? I mean, uh, yeah. And then another thing that might work well. I'm still marked by the coven, mm-hmm. and looking at our clues for the coven, uh, we've got uh, Blockwood being a niece of the coven. Um, some information from the Kenwood House party, and uh, both in person and in character, I have no idea what the Tower Tarot card means. Oh, it, it means like sudden uh, change disruption. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but there could be a scene with uh, Jakob talking with Balakwa now that they've kind of patched up the uh, impatience issue um, with sort of a, you know, I'm concerned you're in danger, Miss Balakwa. It looks like this coven mm-hmm. is out to get you, even though they're also out to get me. <laughs> I like it. These, are, these, feel like, these feel like good scenes. Um... Yeah, we we maybe just... push that and integrate it in with everybody and hold a little parlor at Hargrave House where I think that'd be fine. Yeah. explains this is yeah. what the witches are to Aiden in some context, and then we burst into answer a question. I like that a lot. Yeah. In fact, why don't we take like a five minute break so you all can think about what that scene might look like, and then we'll come back and we'll sort of have that scene and also be doing answer a question. Um, answer a question in character is always a little tricky, but I think this group can handle it, so we'll we'll be good. Uh, I'll see you in five. So everyone's gathered in Hargrave House, and um, we can go ahead and just switch to dusk and say that you have gathered in, um, we'll just say you're in the, you're in the map room. We've already answered that question, so we won't bother with it now, but I do want to remind you of what your question is here, which is specifically where will the final step of their ritual take place? And I think it's worth pointing out that the answer can be like a specific location, like it is going to be at this place, or it can be a description of a place, right? Like, this is the type of place the ritual will take place in. And so you can kind of define define it that way, right? Um, so don't feel like you have to like come up with like a precise location. It can be like, it, it is a it has to be a room that faces this way with a blue door or something like that, right? It can be something weird like that as well. So just to kind of keep your imaginations expansive in that regard. But everyone is gathered. You're all there. It is late in the day at this point. Um, I, I get to just watch, unless you want Sally to show up sometime. <laughs> so take it away. Role play. I think Victoria Balakwa is the epitome of, uh, she's a grad school, a grad school student strung out in finals week like there are pens her hair is unkempt she's been drawing map tattoos on her arms with ink she's laid out all of these papers and she's just been obsessively writing not looking at anybody for a good three minutes and she's like oh right i think that my aunts are on the cusp of something awful I think that it's going to be just Lady Florence. Do you think that Jassad likes witches? Because I don't think that they like him. And I think that all of this is leading, or perhaps even it has to do with Jakob, because he arrived and then the waters flowed in the other direction, but they keep turning to the east and I'm sorry. This has been a very trying time. I need your help because I don't think that there's much time left at all. 
Uh, Lady Florence is uh, just like skinning rats from the basement. Uh, and uh, it's just kind of like she's just doing this and she's just like almost like she's like shucking crawdads like with somebody who's experienced like it's just like fump 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 uh, and she's just like staring uh, at Victoria while she's saying while she's doing this and just says it all seems quite quaint doesn't it for them to be so focused on London given how big this this universe is really they the witches or they jazad because my aunts are definitely in london for a reason the witches the witches jazad that's another matter i have a sense of why he's here what's that what's that jazad jazad is uh, the high ruler of venus um (laughs) And yeah, like Lady Florence is definitely like tenses up at that question uh, and maybe like glances over at Jakob nervously. I mean, I feel like the time to lay our cards on the table are now. Well, here we are in the map room. Uh, Lady Florence, uh, your your travels are widespread and well documented here. Uh Maybe some of these maps are more significant in the course of your life. She just kind of sighed. If you must know, I have been to Venus. I have been to Mars. I have known both. How'd you get there? A rocket ship. How else would you get there? Do do you have one now? That's a good question. I believe my brother dismantled it uh, several years ago. Um, It may be reassemblable, uh, but as far as I know, um, we tried to shut off access one way or the other. Including isolating people in small Welsh farmhouses, apparently. Including <laughs> isolating people in small Welsh farmhouses. Yes, Jacob. Yes. Yes. That but doesn't sound very isolated. There's lots of people in Wales. It's true. I thought it was a wonderful place for the lad. But, you know, to, to be in the sconced in Jean Pedragoch when I could have been in uh Shan Varpus Quingish Gogera Horendrop Shantasilio Gogogoch. I could have been Can in a metropolis. Uh, with with time and patience, yes. Lady Florence just starts spelling it. <laughs> Aiden's taking notes. Mm-hmm. So much magic today, Aiden. Um Ms. Balakwa, we should probably start focusing our conversation on the coven here. Letting off access oh that's well that's it i mean not whales sheep are just rarely the answer to any question but that must be what my aunts are doing what is mutton no it is just what people call sheep so they don't have to think about their little badger faces while they eat them Yes, that's the answer to a question, or a question that the answer is sheep. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's not. There is danger afoot. Aiden, you haven't had much time here to acclimate, but my three aunts are what I would, and perhaps most people would describe as um, deeply evil. And are trying to do what I think is infiltrate London in such a way that uh, they, and then she kind of has this recollection. In the past, Victoria saw them reading the entrails of this Martian. I think that the coven had some sort of foreknowledge that Jazad would show up 
And this whole ritual of theirs is to infiltrate London in such a way so they would be able to expel the Martian influence once more and purify. That sounds like it's working in concert with what we want. Why don't we let them or help them even? Well, because then they would probably subject the lot of London to some really horrifying magics. Once they came to power, God knows what they'd do to the queen. I shudder to think. What about this business with, with all the, the blue? Is that some type of Neptunian thing? Um, Neptune always associated with the color blue. Um, but I'm sure that there's other associations that your aunts or yourself might uh, draw with that color. That and the the tattoos, the blue ink, the I don't know about you all, but I've been having these recurring dreams about this this porcine god and thinking about the blue stamps that they mark upon the meat to approve it. Uh, it feels like the coven might have a second layer of interest. Oh, I thought I was dreaming about Mock. Obert was always muttering about his pig god, wasn't he? Anyway, the blue. Uh, unfortunately, I think that what is needed is a great deal of power that my aunts don't have. They... <sighs> They used me as a vessel for a number of years to do unspeakably evil things. And they are their most powerful when they are channeling through something else. My fear is, is that they are using the oceans themselves to try and repel this sort of uh, alien force from Earth. And the ocean is in fact large enough for them to actually use as a focal point to gather enough power in order to expel them but they're in league with the gilfolk they did arrive in london by boat but i hadn't considered that um lady florence is like She's cutting up these rats and she's like looking at their their insides. Um, and she kind of just starts tapping uh the the scalpel that uh she obtained from uh Sally No Face and just says the blue blood flows back to the heart. The water has been flowing the wrong way. The oceans are the lifeblood of the planet. What if my aunts mean to shove all of this power through the streets of London in order to quite literally wash the city clean? And all of these blue doors are in fact porous points in which they have set up entry points for all of this these waves of magic. It's curious that this is right when your seafaring hunter friend has showed up at Hargrave House. Um, the timing is conspicuous. Um, how interesting. I do wonder, I, I actually am particularly interested in Aiden's question. I mean, why wouldn't you just let them do this and be done with Jazad and then deal with them? Why do you have to deal with them first? Is there more to what they're trying to accomplish? Or is there some inherent danger in their plan? Oh. I have a potential answer. Um, Victoria has been making an awful lot of treks to the fragrant void. And I wonder if that's not the problematic point, is that in order for 
my aunts to channel this much power that it's going to rip these doors will rip through space time different realms whatever dimensions we want to throw in there but that the act of it will actually destroy london itself while their intentions are to get rid of all of these martians they Mm. are not going to be successful ultimately because there is too much power for them to control i like that yeah i think that's probably right and um i'm still also really curious about this detail it's not doesn't it's not reflected in the clues but i think it's interesting that that the Waitley you met in the Fragrant Void did not know about the Venusians um, back in Victorian times. And so that makes me think that like, either there are different timelines or something happens to Jazad, either vis-a-vis the Coven or vis-a-vis your final confrontation with Jazad. I find that very fascinating. The time aspect is really interesting to me, especially if we think about time as as if, if we think about water as a metaphor for time i think that's also very an intriguing idea to explore i don't know just thoughts there's also it might tie into this idea of like the like fate or the way that things are supposed to happen ties back to the the betrayal of london that lady florence made in killing admiral flag aboard the resplendent and she was essentially like saving jassad for Jakob. And so maybe there's something like that that's more than just like familial revenge, like that that is like tied into maybe Lady Florence. I don't think Lady Florence would know it, but to that point, like it ha- it can't be the coven that takes out Jassad or that's to Sarah's point going to rip apart the universe. Um, it's a causality problem, right? There's something yeah, in that we don't yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really fascinating. I like that a lot. I think that I think that sufficiently exp- those things combined. I think sufficiently explains why the coven has to be dealt with right now. I think we should review the clues really quickly. Um, there's this like clue about turning, turning Victoria to face the east. This feels very important, especially because they're scared of what lies in the west. Another clue. Uh, we have these dreams dominated by the color blue. The blue doors. Um, maps in the form of tattoos uh references to the sun as the day star the tower tarot card representing like upheaval and disruption which might again feels very like connected to what we've just discussed um oh phineas's pocket watch quote running out of time what a strange detail that was um water flowing the wrong way like there feels like there's a time element here there's a there's a water element there's a time element i feel like maybe they are analogies for one another i don't really know but uh the the clues are so esoteric and interesting and the question that you have to answer is where is like where is the final confrontation going to take place with the with the coven um and what does that and, and and because I think that gives meaning to what all of it is, right? It's it's a complex question. Um, yeah. Victoria has been in her interactions with the man in the sun mask, progressively taking on more lunar qualities, and the moon having pull with the ocean and there's like another connection I want to make there that isn't quite flushed out enough. I do like the idea of London as the heart and Sarah, I think you had suggested this of like, they're trying to like essentially like flood it uh, with whatever this thing is, which I feel like we've got sort of like the blue and the maps and the water aspect there, the sort of like tying of like the body and the the blood and this sort of like cleansing. I've the cardinal directions are an interesting aspect of how that might tie into that or how we might have to adjust that because of that. So Ben wrote something in the chat, summarizes oh. in the east. Lucifer is Latin for morning star, also Venus. If we take East as Venus Mm -hmm. and Lucifer both, then West could presumably be uh, sort of a Christianity, like a God thing. And if you look at the sort of uh, 
historical antagonism between Christianity and witchcraft that they see the West, if it's a symbol of Christianity, as being uh, a problem. So they're scared of what lies in the West. Well, that's really fascinating. Though. Then the, the question, but I think that sort of like upends the whole like premise here because why would they want to get rid of Venus if we're or, or get rid of Jazad if if they think that like if in their sort of cosmology they consider Jazad and the coming of Venus to be like hell and the devil like you know like no, uh, Venus is morning star and evening star it's visible in both east and west oh very good so Jazad is a variable who who is not within the Christian mythos oh i see oh interesting and and outside of their control like they oh, feel like just, oh so jazad just messes up jazad messes up their whole cosmological worldview <laughs> oh that's really fascinating yeah yeah this that's that's a really intriguing idea like he's undeniably real but the coven is like no you can't be <laughs> like this doesn't work for us it doesn't work for our magic it doesn't work for our belief system that's fascinating and maybe that's what that's why the future doesn't remember jizad this washing isn't just literal it's also metaphysical we will yeah, remove yeah, that's, him from yeah that's what I, yeah it's like it's like he needs to be removed yeah like as a as a concept like you know there cannot be that's really intriguing of course the future presented by phineas waitley and the fragrant void suggests that the coven was successful or at the very least Jazad was dealt with in the way that the coven intended to, even if the coven didn't do it because they're mm -hmm. so evil and dangerous and there are too many follow on problems if they do it. So I find that fascinating. Yeah. Maybe like, he the might be doing punish, that work anyway. punish her by turning her to face the east. They will use Victoria as like the 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 crux of the spell. It'll burn Victoria out and mm. solve two problems at once. So I think we're getting closer yep. to the lo location then. Like this, has, this feels like you know, I feel like we're getting closer to like where this look. Like, if Victoria is important to their spell, uh, that starts to get us a little closer as to where this needs to happen, right? I mean, the fact that my aunts have always used vessels to fuel their power makes some sense that they would need me and mm -hmm. without me that's why they're choosing bodies of water because i left right and so oh, now they're trying I see. to oh. like funnel all of this oh, 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 through oh, oh, something oh. else and now they no longer they no longer have their danger. they no longer have their focus like like the, the ocean is it now yeah <laughs> um very interesting that's intriguing that's an intriguing idea yeah. I love the idea that we solve this by literally Victoria putting herself in the middle of it and perhaps even learning something about this time wash ritual now as we defeat the coven and then perhaps weaponizing it against Jazad going forward. Yeah, yeah, it's intriguing for sure. Okay, uh, yeah. Another quick pitch here, just on the tower tarot card. What if that represents quite literally the tower the of london yeah it could be the place yeah, right? the heart yeah, of yeah. london yeah. uh yeah. and you mentioned mm -hmm. that jasad mm -hmm. is shacking up with the queen so um that would make an appropriate location for yeah. all of this like cleansing washing flooding to mm -hmm. uh culminate also it's a tower which i think yeah. is just <laughs> helpful right mm -hmm. um and that's intriguing. Yeah, that's intriguing. But also there's the, and, and the meaning of the tarot card doesn't lose its meaning at all because like it, so this would be a massive disruption that is, that is anticipated here. Or I actually really love the idea of the coven has like willfully misinterpreted the card to just mean like a literal location, mm. <laughs> right? And and but victoria of course knows that like that's no that's not what this means at all like no that's gonna be a big problem yeah i kind of like this idea of like as sinister as the coven is that they're kind of like incompetent when it comes to something of this scale and well, victoria, they've always had victoria is realizing victoria, yeah that. they've always had victoria as their like crutch essentially right because she's yeah. the one who can actually be the vessel like none of them have the ability to do that mm -hmm. and yeah that's fascinating hmm now that they're and now that they're like kind of you know their their prodigal 
daughter or niece, so to speak, is no longer around, like they've they're they're flailing around and stuff, and um, and now they're really really committed to their view of the cosmos. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, this is I think I feel like we're I feel like we're doing pretty well as far as like location. So the tower. The Tower of London feels like a great thing. It's a it's a it's a misunderstanding of the situation on the Coven's part, which I think is really great. Um, we have water. We have the various blue and water clues. I think which sort of indicates what they intend to do. And I think the pieces of the maps yeah. in the form of tattoos actually is shorthand for mm. where they can enter in and out of these blue doors in London so that mm. there are going to be coven members posted throughout London to like help channel this magic and oh. they're not very well versed and so they need maps to make sure that they get to their proper right. places yeah a variation I, I, on that yeah maybe those aren't coven members maybe they're thralls that that's like a bit of programming mm. when the time is right they will go there mm, that's mm. pretty good mm -hmm. I like that that's a good touch. Um, I feel like we've done a good job with all these clues. The only one that I think we haven't really accounted for in our overall conversation here is Lady Cressida referring to the sun as the day star. I'm not sure the Lady Cressida is saying it is the important part. I think it's the it's I think it's calling the sun the day star is the important part. Um, day star is neither morning star nor evening star. Yeah, it, it forms a distinction between the sun and Venus. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, the sun at the center of things as opposed to being east and west at all. Um, kind of touching on this, like it's breaking the idea of earthbound cardinal direction. And that would be why Jassad, because we were also talking about the day star representing Venus. Mm -hmm. um, sun so never on. fits upon its empire. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, it's a plus two without it. <laughs> it's still a plus two. Yeah, I know. It's still plus two. I mean, that could just be just some, that could just be some just general sort of satanic weirdness. That is because uh, Satanists do refer to the sun as the day star uh, in certain pieces of fiction that I've read, um, which is why that's a clue. Um, in the in the mystery, um, yeah, I don't know. It's still plus two. Uh, I think all the rest of the clues are accounted for pretty well. In so 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 essentially, the idea here, just to recap, the idea here is leading a little bit into like their intentions. Initially, they are fundamentally jazad jazad fundamentally messes up their view of the universe and they need to get rid of him as a result because i mean i mean this is like i mean this is like ideology like taken to quite an extreme right like they're literally sitting here faced with like truth and they're like no we're gonna wipe truth from the map and they're gonna do it in such a way so that jazad like never happened like they're it's 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 this idea of 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 using time to essentially like nullify the very concept of 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 Venusians and Jazad and um and and therefore preserve their view of how the cosmos works, which I think is really really fascinating, and they are using the ocean as their power uh using like like equating water to a metaphor as, or like to water as flowing water as a metaphor for flowing time using the ocean to to essentially pulverize the venusians away uh and also it's their source of power now that Ms. balakwa uh refuses to look to the east anymore and yeah um this is this is great and also just to put a note on scared of what lies in the west they, 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 what lies in the west is their what what they don't want to see is like is jazad essentially like it's just this idea of that like of 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 their their worldview their view of the cosmos being wrong um love all that they have misunderstood the tarot card of the tower um 
to mean a literal place where to focus their magic and they have and furthermore because they because they need because they're not as powerful as Ms. Balakwa on an individual basis they have thralls set up uh to essentially open these metaphorical blue doors to allow the ocean to flow through and uh it will destroy much of London but it will also quite it will eradicate Jazad. It's a fascinating concept. It's really, really good. I like the idea of the Tower of London as the focal point and the location. It's a plus two, very, very complex answer or question, but I think we got there. I think we got there. It was really interesting and cool. Um, Ms. Velacqua, do you want to roll? I do, because I really don't want Mike to roll. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see how we do. Excellent. Uh, a plus two is a nine. Nine. Okay. There's a fight. <laughs> so um, I don't think you all, you all don't really have the ability to mark masks to bump it up unless Lady Florence wants to die. So um, here at the, here at the 11th hour. So we're looking at a nine. Okay, great. Let's take a 10 minute break. We'll come back and we will confront the coven. Before we dive into the night phase, uh, we're not going to have an unseen. We're going to have just kind of an extended night phase. Um, before we dive in, though, Lady Florence, do you want to invoke the Royal Explorers Club at all? Oh, I probably should. I should have been <laughs> thinking about that while we were gone. I've got a lot of checks left here. Um, we don't yeah. need clues, that's for sure. Um, yeah. We were just talking about items. Um, the armory could be helpful if you want specialized witch fighting weapons. That could be uh -huh. good. Um, do we want to be able to do crimes? I always love being able to do crimes. I'm gonna do that one. Okay. Uh, which is okay. the direct Scotland Yard one. Okay, so we're going to have to break into the Tower of London. So, so crime they'll, they'll, oh, they'll yeah, give you access to the Tower of London, but you'll you won't you'll be able to get in no trouble. Love so it. That's good. Okay, that's a problem solved. Um, party. Um. Jason, off camera, I did remind my fellow hunters that because of my witch's cupboard, that they could take an additional item mm -hmm. uh, for this fight if they yeah, needed it. Yeah, I took I mean, salt for me. Very good, very good. Yeah, grab these items to get these bonuses. You're going to need them on the rolls, probably. So, or do we need to declare that in advance? Uh, uh, no, but, I, mean, I don't know. But no, but you can say you, you did it, it and retroactively. I think that's fine. Okay. Um, yeah, let's do the specialized weapon one too, just to be safe. Probably something, maybe even like something that, like, um, you know, maybe something that is even left over from Mr. Constantine, you know, that Ooh. might be in the house as well. Uh, although I suppose this is all stuff that, uh, well, so Rear Admiral Bingley Green used to be a member of Hargrave House, so that's why he's able to equip you with which hunting weapons. Um, it says, The Rear Admiral is a former member of Hargrave House and has an unmatched collection of specialized weapons he collected from his time there. He's happy to give you access to them from time to time. Uh, you can each add a specialized weapon to your personal quarters. Uh, great. <laughs> um, once it's marked, you do have to remove it from your personal quarters, but otherwise it is there. I think you can each uh, pick something from the list here. There's a bunch of things if you want to go over it. Silver bullets, cold iron swords, all that kind of stuff. You can mix stuff up too. I'm picturing Rear Admiral Alfred Bingley Green, even though he's no longer a member of Hargrave House, sort of intuitively knows when somebody's about to leave. Mm -hmm. And it shows up on the street with a, like a buckboard wagon with like, He's done with that. Yeah, he's got he's got like he's got like Mr. Right Constantine here. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Like I think this belonged to Dominic. Yeah, he wasn't used. <laughs> he doesn't need it anymore. He's off living his best life in the country. 
Actually, can I do a throwback, Ben? Remind me of your um, first character we played together. You're undeniable. Mr. Genadios. Yes. Mr. Genadios had a bolt action crossbow, like arm mounted <laughs> thing that shot stakes. Yes, uh, that Victoria was from, wants that. <laughs> that was from, uh, from the list. Thing. Yeah. The, uh, or wait, no, was it? I can't remember. I thought we got it from. You might have made it up for vampires. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But Go anyway. For it. Very interesting indeed. Um, different universe. That story is not part of the story, <laughs> but <laughs> but I but I but I like the idea of it in spirit. Um, I want a, I'm going to make it a custom one that is a, um, um, a shiv that was used by Matthew Hopkins, the mm. Witchfinder general, mm. um, that is, uh, carved from a stake that witches were burned, that he burned witches at. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it has some power at sealing them away. It's a grim movie too, The Witchfinder General. It is grim little, mean spirited movie, <laughs> with no witches. <laughs> it's a, the movie's got it's got zero witches. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's all it's all Witchfinder, <laughs> no witches. Um, I think I'm gonna make something a little little unique too. Um, it's uh, venusian gauntlets like mm. venusian uh assault crew gauntlets um you know possibly left over from the actual assault on mars oh interesting okay cool uh is jacob uh, i guess you're not taking just a fuck ton of dynamite <laughs> i was debating over that thinking like you know that could be fun but then i thought maybe to sort of add to the extraterrestrial element to to have a uh salvage from the wreckage of mars uh like venusian assault team weaponry the and effect of the gauntlets is essentially the effect of a fuck ton of dynamite <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> venusian fuck ton of dynamite disguised as invasion gauntlets <laughs> thank you aiden what are you taking uh i grabbed flash powder sounds good all right so everyone's got some special stuff they can use for this fight all right and yeah, you have access to Scotland Yard um, when you get there, so that is good to go. Or access to the tower via Scotland Yard. Um, I think before you're even done having your conversation in the map room, we see the coven, wherever they're at, maybe in the tower, standing in a circle. They have a puppet on marionette strings that one of them is manipulating. The other one, another of the witches, takes a match, lights it, and burns the puppet's face, chars it, And you hear the third one saying, muttering, poor old Sally, trapped in a fire. And as you're having your conversation, Sally No Face has turned up all the gas in the house. You might smell it. But the gas is hissing, coming out of the little sconces. And that is the coven's opening move here, is to blow up Hargrave House using Sally No Face, ironically. Who do we suppose is first aware of this? <laughs> Maybe a Martian. Be... Oh, go on. I, I was going to say uh, the one with the seal nose. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's Sounds nice. Sounds good. Aiden, and yet you wouldn't necessarily know what you were smelling, would you? You might not recognize the danger. Mm, yeah. 
So what do you do? I think he'll 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 get a hint of it as he's uh, dressing after uh, as preparation begins, and just start following it out into the the hall, just sniffing till he hits one of those sconces and. Uh, Lady Florence. Aiden. Is it supposed to smell like this? Like what? Eggs gone bad? No. Okay. Yeah, I think no, sorry, gone. Victoria's just saying, oh no. Oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. And she starts to make uh an exit. Like she's she's literally trying to flee. Victoria's running. Jakob, what are you doing? Uh using my breath like Gale Force winds to blast out the windows. Mm, mm, that's very good. Get all the glass outwards. Yeah, that's pretty good to get the gas out. I like that. Uh Okay, we'll have that be the move. Uh, night move. What are you afraid is going to happen if you fail? Take a deep breath in right before the spark goes off. Um, yeah, uh, not good. Uh, it's worse than that. The house goes up in flames, uh, and the rest of your companions are having to deal with getting through the burning wreckage of Hargrave House. Do go ahead and roll with vitality i guess yeah. makes the most sense here quickly see if i've got any objects that might give some advantage here i've never used that homemade crystal radio receiver that works when i'm around but has no power source okay how is might that a, help is there a chance there's a burst of static and then a vintage martian recording in that the venusians had an opening bombardment of gas and that's just sort of echoing out from martian history oh so you kind of like intuit what's happening here yeah like this is the gas attack <laughs> i like it i'm into it yeah it's fun um right, good i always wanted to use that thing i thought it was cool I just never had a reason until now i like it roll with advantage and vitality it's pretty good you're marked All by right. the kevin but i'm not going to invoke that right now okay a little too indirect uh goodness that's an 11 nice and i didn't even get to vitality yet i think i'm like at a 13 yeah that's great uh here's your bonus you'll be able to locate sally no face in hargrave house if you wish oh yeah we've got we've got words to have, to have. go ahead and uh narrate how you save everyone from a gas explosion Ooh. um i don't know seeing the Aiden's nostrils doing that seal thing. Um, the conversation, uh, Miss Balaka's reaction, then hearing that radio, kind of it all was like click, 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 click. This is adding up to we're under attack. And uh, in a gas bombardment, you need fresh air. And so jettison my breath out to just shatter every single window, figuring Lady Florence can repair those later. I'm sure it won't be a problem. Um, and uh, I don't know, a few sundries get tossed out into the street. They might be interesting uh, bits collected by passersby that will uh, tell a, a bigger story in a future. Yeah, yeah, I like that. People just like randomly, like, what's this weird object? <laughs> yeah. Like, like, a shriveled monkey paw yeah, that has a yeah, tattoo yeah, yeah, like, exactly. to their house. <laughs> this cursed music box. Like, oh. <laughs> right. um, <laughs> I like it. Uh, good, fantastic. Do you want to go hunting Sally No Face? Yeah, uh, I feel like I've seen where these gas valves are turned on and uh, we'll head towards the mechanics of it. What are the rest yeah. of you doing right now? As Victoria ran outside, it was her full intention to um, perform some sort of giant ritual to bar Hargrave House from her aunt's influence by using a ritual of salt and smoke, rites of salt and smoke. Indeed, indeed. Uh, now's the time to do that, if you're going to do that. Mm -hmm. um, 
I like that very much. Uh, go ahead and roll. Or what's your sacrifice? Uh, so, oh God, same blood as always. I think that I'm going to take for an advantage one of the crystal quartz um, from my witch's cupboard and snap it. Mm. And then just like hold it into the palm of my hand as I kind of like ritually gesture mm. to use my own blood in order to create some sort of protective magical bubble. This will break their hold over Sally. So if you mm. succeed. So. And oh, advantage. Okay. That's a nine plus three is 12. Very good. Um, I think your bonus here is going to be, um, hmm. let me think about it for a bit. But for now, I like the, I want to know where Lady Florence and Aiden are in time and space right now. Aiden would be uh, moving toward Lady Florence, hoping that uh, she would have some insight about what to do here. Mm -hmm. uh, th what I had been thinking, if Lady Florence were to identify that Sally No Face was responsible, uh, Lady Florence has been growing bored of <laughs> Sally No Face, yeah. and uh, she has also crossed a line. Um, you can so follow Jakob to where she's at. I think. That's, yeah, I that's think fine. I would be yeah. going hunting uh, mm -hmm. as sort of the yeah disciplinarian of the group here. I think the way this looks is you actually see Sally, you can actually see like spectral marionette strings coming off of Sally's arms and shoulders and legs. Um, clearly she's under some kind of control and she even like moves in a weird jerky way. You find her in some upstairs parlor and then as soon as Ms. Balakwa finishes her rite of salt and smoke, it's almost like scissors just snipped the marionette strings and they disappear. And Sally says, oh, I, I don't know what happened. I, I, I consider myself as a general matter, a very self-possessed person, but uh, something overtook me. I hope no one was harmed. Jakob turns to Lady Florence. Do you are you buying this? Do you believe this? Uh oh God. I think I tell Aiden and Jakob, um, let me talk this over with Sally. Just us, yes. So you so it's just gonna be the two of you, they're gonna leave you? Mm-hmm. Do you do you two leave Lady Florence with Sally? Yeah, why not? For me, after a a very long and held poignant stare through the eye holes of her mask, and sort of a muttered, uh, you know, you you get only so many chances in life, and then I stalk away. Once they're gone, Lady Florence, Sally says, I suppose this is going to be the end of our association then. I do want to make this fair, but yes, um, I feel that Jakob has given away the plot. Very well. But I won't make it easy for you, Lady Florence. Would you like to settle this with knives or with guns? And she slowly raises her scalpel. And she says, oh, I think you know the answer to that question, Lady Florence. I have one of those too. <laughs> Is the scalpel off? <laughs> 
Yeah, this is going to be uh, the night move to take out Sally No Face. What are you afraid is going to happen if you fail? Um, Sally No Face is going to take my face and pretend that she's Lady Florence. And... <laughs> that would be something. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it's worse than that. I think she's going to, as she kills you, she's going to remove her mask and reveal something really, really uncomfortable to you. But I want that to happen. As you die. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to roll with vitality here. Um, do you have an item that will give you advantage? The scalpel. The scalpel. Very good. Do you have any conditions? If you do not will affect you so you're good to go uh it's another a lot 12 plus very good these this is the, the advantages are helping a lot here um mm -hmm. go ahead and describe how you destroy sally um i I kind of want this to be like that scene in Hero where the two fighters are like dueling and you see the whole like you see them like skirmishing and or this happens in Kill Bill, I think, as well. Like you see this whole big elaborate fight that's going on in their heads as they're both sort of like strategizing every move and like envisioning what's going to happen. And in reality, they're just kind of like staring at each other for a couple seconds and then uh, Lady Florence just flick. Yeah, it's before, like... before Sally No Face even processes what happens. And maybe it's like coming up from an angle that she can't catch with the mask. Like mm -hmm. Lady Florence has been studying this. Uh, and that clicks and it's just like yeah. it's like the it's like the fight with Oren at the end of the first one word. It's just yes. a single blow. Yeah. yeah yep. That's good. Just yeah. quick and yeah, in some ways anticlimactic, anticlimactic, but very climactic because of it. She slumps down and she's on her knees, bleeding out. They will continue writing stories about Sally No Face. History will not forget me, but only you will know that the legend was somewhat embellished. And she removes her mask to reveal not a face horribly burned by scars, but she's just, a, she's a remarkably beautiful woman, <laughs> perfectly untouched by anything just fucking crazy and she falls down quite dead that wasn't the uncomfortable truth i had in mind you have gotten something different with a miss mm -hmm. but mm. but nevertheless she is no more so the coven what is the plan? Are you going to try to stop the thralls so that they can't create, they can't open portals throughout the city? Or are you going to go straight to the tower? Or are you going to split up? Like, what's going to happen here? I feel like Victoria would want to stand in front of them to get to the point where she thinks that she can interrupt the whole ritual and perhaps even direct or control it in some way. So my instinct is that she would go to the source that said, I do have a bonus coming. So maybe that will come into play. Mm, I like that. Yeah. Um, I think the bonus, I kind of like the idea of I mean, you have, I mean, Scotland Yard is looking the other way. I think the bonus is this. I think before they even get to the tower, you'll be able to use the blue door portals throughout the city to hunt the coven. Hmm. 
to essentially do sneak attacks on them. They'll have their thralls there, but they might be there, you know, sort of like making last minute preparations and, and they're split up, right? So that would be a thing. I think we've established that there are three coven members. So uh, that are kind of running the show. And so you just get to pick them off one by one. Uh, who do you want to start with? Sorry, I'm plowing through my notes trying to remember my third aunt's name. <laughs> Is Isadora, Agatha, and the other one. I don't and remember. the other one, the, other the short one. one. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember her name. Um, well, as you wish. So, uh, <laughs> um, okay. So I like this. But, so are you all going to split up or are you going to like go take them out like as a team? Buddy like, system? Two and two, that could be fun. Yeah. yeah. Part of me feels like uh, Jakob is going to shadow Lady Florence for a change. Hmm. In that sense of, of I had a certain outcome for for um, Sally No Face in mind. And, oh, I don't know, hard to explain, but just sort of a filial... Uh, sense of allegiance in this moment <laughs> as, as you do <laughs> we might just all be going together then because i think after the sally no face incident and seeing the strings attached to her for that moment i know that it's the witches and i am not letting victoria uh knowing that she is a vessel and is connected to them like out of my mm. out of my eyes uh, out of my gaze so I am absolutely following Victoria in some ways just to make sure that Victoria is not also um, going to be manipulated or to uh, treason us I'm curious Aiden how might Selkie magic be helpful with these portals that connect to the ocean <laughs> so uh, owing to the cosmic passage that i marked last week i can move and control sources of water within eyesight oh very good okay so i, like I was thinking uh he would absolutely agree to go with lady florence and victoria and if they were not going to the closest to, to the witch closest to the ocean he would go on his own oh interesting okay so i like this uh yeah, because there has to be one that can kind of like that's at the source, right? And then and then you have another one that moves it through the city, and then you have the final one uh, who's like at the tower, sort of directing all of this. Uh, who's sort of you know using the tower as a, as a fulcrum for all this magic? Okay, intriguing. So maybe you go to the source and you know, stop it at the source. Um, love that. I think it's probably. I mean, I think it's probably, you know, it's, it's, it's obviously somewhere on the Thames, right? And I think, what is it? First of all, let's talk about the blue door. So Victoria, just with your bonus, just narrate like how you use magic to travel through the blue door to reach your aunt quickly to get everybody there on site very fast before the coven can make any more moves. Um, I'm imagining yakety sack playing and I'm trying really hard to keep it <laughs> together. To, yeah. <laughs> so I think what it is is that these doors have been painted over brick and stone walls and they're in nooks and corners of all of the city. And I think that it ends up being one of those sorts of things where, uh, so she'll take her hand that's still bloody from the crystal and just apply that red hand print to the face of the door and you see the dark tendrils kind of like flush out like ink and color the door black and then nothing so i can actually just step through it as if it is an opening into darkness hmm. and i do so and then as chat expect <laughs> uh it's way to beat lady florence goes in right after her Jakob after lady florence and then aiden 
coming through the rear. And as we pass through the door, that last bit of uh, black just clicks back to reality and it's a blue door once again. Mm. And we do that three or four times. Like we open that door into a different part of London and then open it to a different until we finally until you find them. triangulate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we see one of your aunts making preparations on the beach. There are a number of, uh, I don't know if they're thralls as much as they are just uh, sacrifices living puppets for their power but you see them all kind of lined up on the beach or on the shore there of the thames you're somewhere near probably near chelsea harbor we'll say and it is nighttime and you see your aunt it's unclear which one it is at this point but the heavy black veil you know they stand out and She says, oh, you are very clever to have taken me by surprise like this. And yet I am not one to casually underestimate your power, Victoria. You and your companions, Hargrave House, will find that this is your final stand. And at this point, she takes a knife and she's got like a bunch of these, like like a half dozen of these thralls. And she, they're just standing there kind of mouth agape, staring glassy eyed into nothingness. And she takes a knife and begins splitting their stomachs open. And as she splits their stomachs open, a different type of vermin pours out. So the first one is just a flood of rats begins pouring out of the body of this person. They just stand there as the rats empty out and she tears open another one. And it's like, uh, it's like flying insects, uh, millipedes, things like that. And she's just gonna cut them all open and send this, these tides of vermin to keep with our ocean theme, these tides of vermin out at you. Aiden, this might be where you step in. What do you do? I think seeing this and seeing the others, he's, he's going to kind of swallow and he'll blink a bit and his eyes will kind of take on a, a different aspect. They'll be a little rounder, a little darker. And he'll look at the ocean and say to Lady Florence, wait here. And he's going to step forward and he's going to bring the ocean forward to drown the rats but also make a wall to separate him and the witch from the others so you're going to bring you're going to drown the rats and you want to separate yourself with the witch yes oh interesting very interesting. Uh, I like this very much. Um, you, 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 Cosmic Passage just lets you do that, right? It's otherwise a night move, right? There's no other move attached to it. Uh, correct. And my next roll will get advantage, but it's uh, it has additional risks. Mm, okay. Um, love this. Uh, it's going to be with uh, sensitivity and night move. What do you phrase is going to happen if you fail? Uh Lady Florence and or Victoria are going to kill me for what I'm about to do. <laughs> uh, very interesting. Well, that's if you fail, though. Uh, or that's if you succeed. What are you, what are you phrasing to happen if your magic doesn't work right now? Uh, they're, they're going to kill me for what I'm going to try to <laughs> do. <laughs> try to do. Very good, very good. Um, okay, great. Uh, it's worse than that, obviously. I think the witch will kill you for what you're trying to do. Uh, do go ahead and roll a sensitivity. That's 11. Nice. The scene is yours. As the, he, he doesn't raise his hand or anything. There's no uh, real outward sign, but you can see a strain in his, his movements and his, 
his uh, expression as he separates himself from the others the the water first rushing forward and sweeping the tide of vermin into this, this drowning swirl of, of Thames water, which then rises like the crest of a wave between him, the others, and the witch. And he's going to hold out his hand and say, the others want to kill you, but I need your help. Very interesting indeed. Is the plan here to to basically ferret away one of these witches no matter what happens here at the very least he's going to try and get information to help him fix his pelt uh and if she will promise to help yeah he's gonna get her try and get her away i like this a lot i'm gonna let you do it i think what's gonna happen is if it's okay, I think what the story is here is you just pretend like she drowned, but in fact, you hide her from the others. That works for me. Very interesting. Let's just have the moment after the waters have cleared. Role play. I think we the will see the, in sight. the knife in the, the sand and Aiden looking exhausted as he kind of just drops to the beach and uh, looks toward the others and says, easy as pie. That was extremely foolish. You were listening earlier when I said extremely evil, right? Those words stuck in your brain there. Evil is, <laughs> it's all relative, but this is... This is my domain, and none shall pollute it. Not while I stand by. I think Victoria just looks to Lady Florence. Oh, wonderful. And you did that just with the water and the knife. Mostly just a water. normal knife. I mean, she still needed to breathe. It's incredible. I would think to take out a witch would take something a little bit more. They don't float, according to your own lore on the subject. I suppose that's true. My colleagues uh, would assert that, those who have uh, dabbled in, in such arts. Isn't that true, Victoria? I've never seen you swim. All those trips we made to the beach last summer. Victoria looks away from Lady Florence. At this point, I would love to know. I have sense of my aunt since they have been in London. I have been able to sense them. Can I truly just, am I completely befuddled by this act or can I sense her still? I think maybe, just to keep the fiction clean here, I think yeah. maybe you're just distracted by what you see next, which is you're the second aunt who's somewhere else in the city realizing that things have gone awry, flying okay. to the tower. Yeah. She's flying to the tower. She's in a carriage pulled by a bunch of black cats and the black cats are climbing into the air. So they're like, they're like reindeer, but, but cats pulling the carriage across the moonlit the moonlit sky towards the Tower of London. Give me Wait. one moment with Jakob and Aiden here. Please do. Um, I think Jakob as, waits for a moment for like a few footsteps between Lady Florence and, and Miss Palacqua to like step away. And is noticing the absence of a, a witch corpse and maybe some soggy footprints tracing back towards Hargrave House and, and looks to Aiden and has a moment thinking, you know, Maybe there's another reform-minded member of our house and gives a, a good ten-fingered pat on the shoulder to Aiden saying, you know, that, that's that's impressive. Nicely done. I, I think you have a future here at Hargrave House. And then cut back uh, to Aiden. Aiden will clearly look 
unsure how to feel about that. <laughs> oh. The Victoria on the beach just looks like she's about to say something and then looks to the east, I guess. <laughs> yes, indeed. You see, you see your aunt's weird little trap pulled by cats climbing across the sky towards the Tower of London. What do you do when you see that? I think we need another little door montage. Um, God, I had a quick moment of like, I was going to use Aiden's knife, which should have her blood on it, and it doesn't. And I just assumed that it must have gotten washed off. And I, uh, God, I just continue using my own blood for this. It's going to go really badly over the long run. Yeah, I think you're going to have to take drained as a condition at this point. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, but I managed to slower this time and there's more of like a smearing on that last door as we open to the tower of london victoria looks exhausted mm -hmm. um i think i don't think your bonus is in play anymore i want to write up salt and smoke for this one uh go ahead and roll that mm -hmm. oh. okay well that one's on the floor that is a eight plus three is another 11. Nice. So dice are so good to us today. Um, A couple of problems. Victoria, you can blue door to the tower, no trouble. Lady Florence, Aiden, and Jakob, you'll be aware that the aunt that's racing around in the sky, what she's actually doing is She's dropping little bundles down onto the streets of London. And as they land, they unfurl in some sort of strange poisonous fog. And so she's dropping these like, these like f sort of green fog bombs all over the city. I think at this point they realize that their rituals fucked up and now they're just they're just, it's just mayhem and terror at this point. That's, they're just leaning straight into mayhem and terror. And you can hear screams coming up as the fog seeps into houses, as it chokes children in their beds. Uh, none of this is good. Um, Victoria has gone through the blue door, presumably to the tower. What are the three of you doing? Are you gonna to try to stop the second aunt who's, who's green goblining it over London or, or what are we gonna do here? Well, I feel like the scale of this is bigger than what Lady Florence feels at least like they can handle on their own. And I think I might go talk to uh, an old fling about this. Um, someone who has a spaceship that might be able to hunt down a flying witch <sighs> and uh, has uh, people all about the city that can help and are maybe not affected by this green, foggy, poison stuff. Okay, so you're going to try to convince Jazad to help you with this problem. I like that. Yep. Um, let's figure out what everyone else is doing. Aiden, what are you doing? Are you going to the tower or to Resplendent? I think uh, the tower. I feel like okay. you wouldn't be invited to Resplendent. Yeah. Uh, Jakob, I don't think you really get to go to Resplendent. Um, no, right. I think heading towards the tower makes sense, helping innocent bystanders along the way, if that's a thing that makes sense. I love it. Let's take five. Well, Lady Florence, of course, Jazad can be found at Buckingham Palace, which helpfully is not far from the tower. Um, and I don't think, I think they're pretty close to each other. I could be wrong about that, but... Um, You know, enough of enough of enough people, enough of the authorities in the city are alerted to whatever's happening in the sky right now. And as you get to Buckingham Palace, you can even hear like distant screams as the fog, you know, sort of like takes people in their sleep. Um, and you are allowed in, no trouble. Uh, and you find yourself there in a sort of 
some stuffy gilded room in Buckingham Palace with paintings and ridiculous tea sets. It doesn't look like Jazad's thing at all. But he's there. And he says, Oh, I suppose you're very lucky that I'm a bit of a night owl. Um, I believe that you're lucky. Oh, am as I? As well. Do tell Lady Florence. How am I lucky? They don't want London. They want you, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> am I supposed to be scared of some low folk magic? I am the High Imperator of Venus. I have more power in this little pinky finger right here than they do in their entire little trio. You've come across many individuals, mm. human or otherwise, who want to be done with you, myself included. Yes, yes, it's a recurring theme in my life. But I don't believe you have uh, come across anyone who wants to be rid of you quite like this yet. Oh, this is also troublesome. Isn't it your job to protect the city? It is. At least that's what I've been tasked with. And that's why, unfortunately, I have to come to you in this situation oh, you need my help doing your job hmm you are a critical part of london these days after all yes yes i have managed to somehow make a home in this place as disagreeable as it is i mean just look at all this tat Ugh, god Ugh. that this should be the pinnacle of your species and its civilization is, well, how unfortunate for you. Nevertheless, this is, here we this are. This is a bit provincial, isn't it? Mm. It would be a shame if someone like yourself were to just be vanished from the face of the you earth. You keep saying this, and yet I don't quite understand what sorts of technology could just wipe me away like that. Why don't you come out and see for yourself? Oh, and he goes to the window and maybe see the witch streaking by and hear the screams in the distance. He says, I suppose I have some sort of obligation to protect the people of this city, considering I, considering I have taken, taken on a sort of interior ministerial post within Her Majesty's government. <sighs> and yet, I do like to be rewarded for my trouble, Lady Florence, as you well know. And what do you have in mind? I have in mind an opportunity for you to make amends with me. Let's just say there are things going on in the background, things that might lead you to an early grave, things that have completely spun out of my control, unless I were sufficiently motivated to regain my wherewithal in this matter. I can keep you alive. You're not the only, I'm not the only one who always has a target on his back. You too have a tendency to anger those you encounter. It's true, and that's why our fates are intertwined, is it not? Mm, perhaps. Agree now that you will, when this is all over, Climb aboard Resplendent. 
and go back to Venus with me. I'll make you the Lord Governess of Mars or something. Leave this place behind with me. Um, she picks up one of these like gaudy teacups uh, and is just kind of like looking at it, looking at sort of the, I don't know, East Asian weird caricature depictions on it, that type of thing. Uh, and she just says, I suppose that time has come and just throws the teacup against the wall. Well, I'm glad you've finally seen reason. I will ensure that the long, watery daggers that are making their way toward your back will get lost en route. Shall we? solidify this arrangement, make it official in some way. Memorialize our agreement. Um, I have, I think, yes. Uh, I have the, <laughs> the heavy metal chit from the exclusive betting hall. Um, and I think that like, uh, Lady Florence is a is a big gambler, and like this sort of like thing is uh, a a symbol of her word, um, as well as the way that she gambles with other people's lives and her own. How predictably literal of you, Lady Florence. Very well. <sighs> I'll take care of your witch problem, and. There's a good game there every Tuesday, too. You can, uh, with that, get get admittance. Mm -hmm. Practically quavering with excitement. And he... It doesn't take much time. He sends word in whatever way that he does. And you will see flying down from resplendent large a large dragonfly-like vessel, or perhaps some sort of automaton or automaton, or I don't know how to say that word, um, flying down, and it intercepts the witch, and you just, it, it's just, yeah, like, she's just vaporized, and that's the end. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the tower, Let's paint the scene. As the others enter the tower, how do we know it is currently? It is currently under the control of a very malignant witch. The mortar between the bricks glows pale, iridescent kind of blue light. And I think much like uh, Victoria's dark spirit, there are tendrils of this foggy darkness that, that extends over the whole tower like veins. Every single stray cat in the entirety of London has converged here. Think about that for a second. It's a lot of cats. It also means that all of the rats have fled elsewhere. Indeed, indeed. That is kind of a horrifying thought. All those cats, like, around. You can just hear them yowling. <laughs> I'm imagining a World War Z kind of situation. Yeah, where they're like, climbing up, up on top of each other. Yeah, yeah, it's horrifying. We'll just go All straight the to the chase. Wood. Oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. All the exposed wood has, like, sprouted uh, branches, mm. which are forming these burrs. These, like, mm. very strange-looking burrs. And if you brush up against a um sideboard or a 
doorway or whatever, you get these weird burrs stuck to your clothes. We'll just cut straight to the chase. I think you're in an upper level of the tower facing Agatha. She says, you have come to me in a weakened state. You are clearly exhausted. And the beings you play host to are hungrier than ever and just have had their leashes loosened ever so slightly. I speak now to the ones who linger in my niece's peripheral vision. You have an opportunity here to claim her forever, to no longer be tools for her use, but to have her to do as you will. You have only now to stop her, to give me your power, if even momentarily, so that I may stop her. Intervene in whatever way your dark hearts see fit, and she is yours. And how can you tell Ms. Balakwa that the entities are considering her offer? Much like in my mask flashback, there is less of the inky tendril viscosity to their uh, sensations in my skin, but they become pointed once more at the ends. Mm. You start to feel them pawing around the boundaries of what keeps them where they are, pressing against whatever invisible membranes keep them from spilling out into the streets. Yes, that's it. Come to me. And she holds out her hands. I am an inadequate vessel, to be sure. But help me now, and the real prize is yours forever. And you can see they're trying, they are, they are going to go to your aunt. What do you do? I reach for Dominic's blade Remus at my hip and I reach to flash out and cut and remove her hands from her body. <laughs> Very good. This is going to be, a, oh, is it vitality? Is it sensitivity? I think it's, I think it's vitality because it would be for Dominic. Um, it's gonna and be I just... have to actually wield the thing. Like I'm not yeah, using well, any of my yeah, magic. Exactly. Yeah, just exactly. angry. <laughs> that's precisely right. And you are drained as well. So it's going to be disadvantage unless you get to mark those blades. I'll mark his blade to balance it because I cannot fail this roll. No, I did not. Go ahead and roll. Oh, what am I afraid of? Wait, yeah, what are you afraid of? Yeah. Um, that in my weakened state, I miss. And that everything that I am afraid is about to happen will happen, telegraphed by her. That once again, she will control this part of me mm -hmm. um, in a way that has not been true since I was a child. And it's worse than that. She's going to use this power to dispatch Jakob and Aiden easily. So, or at least try to. Uh, go ahead and roll if you are ready to go forward. Okay. Uh, what is my vitality? I don't think I've ever actually... No, I did like a million years ago, rolled it for the sculptor. Okay. Well, that is a seven. Okay. 
Um, I am going to, I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a condition. So you might as well mark that last mask of the past. Okay. What is the condition? Can I pick? <laughs> Cause I'd oh, have to swap it anyway. Uh, yeah. Uh, the condition would probably be, well, I'm thinking something basically, um, like something related to the fact that the entities have like tasted a possibility that they want now, you know, so like mm -hmm. they might always be a, like a problem in this way and not so compliant. I'll just keep drained then and it's fine. I just uh, will mark that last mask. Indeed. Um, this might be a good time to narrate that flashback to the event that influenced you to leave the coven for good since you're about to dispatch the coven. So, um, the initiation was these dark spirits quite literally impregnating Victoria on that altar. And so about six months later, we see like she's asleep in bed and there is almost like this uh, black Icarus off-gassing from her stomach. And she wakes again and realizes that um, whatever is inside of her is not only not human, but is the, um, like in a flash of premonition, she realizes that this is what her aunts want, that this vessel will be something that they can use to finally gain the kind of power and control that they want over the rest of mm, probably humanity. So, um, Victoria, we see her lying in bed for, oh, probably a couple of days bedridden before in an evening kind of dusk uh, setting, she whispers to those dark entities, I will give you everything I have if you take this from me. And in the morning, much like her mother before her, the bed is flooded with black, ichor, damp, bed sheets ripped everywhere. Her aunts come in and Victoria is nowhere to be found um, and has fled to London with no child, but has finally wrestled supreme control over these dark forces and bound them to herself in such a primal and metaphysical way that they cannot be wrenched from her. And so as Victoria reaches out with this blade to remove her aunt's hands, the tendrils extend from the blade as well and pierce through my aunt Agatha's evil black chest rips from stomach to belly button and her entrails flop onto the tower floor. And while Aiden and Jakob watch in absolute terror, I imagine, <laughs> Victoria sinks her hands into her aunt's guts and through every ounce of magic that she can muster, tries to channel this ritual that is already in motion to try and pull the pieces back together again so she can wipe them from time and space. Thank you. That is the coven threat resolved. I think we're going to do an epilogue here because we are in 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 our in our reality we're going to take a, a little bit of a break before we come back uh with this campaign a uh, couple of month break and so i think it might be nice to do a little epilogue for some of these characters at this point in time i do want to out of character really really like figure out what lady florence's situation looks like at this point because essentially what what jazad has offered or what the offer was was to basically you come back to Venus with me and I'll keep you safe is essentially what the offer was, right? But also there's a slight implication that Jazad is willing to go back to Venus also, which I find really fascinating. Um, 
he clearly has an issue with the last Martian. That's a problem. Um, and he might have other plans as well for, you know, more broader plans of conquer and conquest. But I think obviously one of his main goals was to also get you back as well, Lady Florence, and he will have accomplished that. And so the question becomes, if Lady Florence keeps up her end of the bargain and goes to Resplendent, um, are we retiring Lady Florence? If we're retiring Lady Florence, are we retiring Jazad? Does Jazad is there no longer a confrontation with Jazad? I don't know. Maybe Jazad is off the table as well. And Jakob and the rest get to continue living their lives in London free of his of his uh, influence, in which case the final confrontation was with the, was with was with the Wolf King and the Coven. Um, or maybe Lady Florence does not hold up her end of the bargain and does not go to Resplendent. So I think we need to figure out out of character what we think is happening here so that we can figure out how we're going to proceed with the campaign. Um, in the event that Jazad just leaves, the, you know, obviously we would pick up with the second campaign, but I also think that that puts a little bit of pressure on, on, it also kind of puts some pressure on Jakob and Ms. Balakwa, like, are they ongoing characters at this point anyway, as well? Like, are just all the characters retiring at that point? And we have new ones along with Aiden. Um, I don't know. What is everyone's thoughts? I think that Lady Florence probably accepted this deal in thinking, like, she's still trying to position things so that Jakob can get vengeance for what happened to Mars on Jassad. Um, and I think in that moment, she felt like there was there was opportunity. Maybe she thinks it's like it would be fitting for that to happen on Venus. Oh, to maybe, Venus. Maybe the final conflict with Jazad is in Venus or in space. That could be fun. So um, she's, I think that that's the thing is like, she is still trying to like mm, move pieces mm -hmm. around. She's willing to sacrifice herself to get those pieces into place. But I feel like they're not quite locked in at this point. So I like the idea of the final confrontation with Jazad taking place in space. I think that would be pretty cool. Like Jazad thinks it's over. But mm -hmm. it's not. <laughs> um, Lady and... Florence is there, and the rest of us have just stowed away. Yeah, you're all just stowaways <laughs> on Resplendent. Yeah, um, that would be interesting. Um, it does have a lot of luggage. Yeah, yeah. There is implication that there are the parts of a spaceship uh, on Lady Florence's brother's estate, for whatever it's worth, as well. Yeah. Um, and there's the portals. I think yeah. that we haven't necessarily like tied up the portals. Like yeah. that has not necessarily happened. So, yeah, I mean, um, we've we've well established portal travel as a thing in this campaign. Um, okay. Uh, well, so in that case, let's just have a little epilogue with just kind of showing the characters kind of at the end of this season, because I think whatever's going to happen, it's going to be a Christmas time confrontation, completely bookend the campaign, two Christmases. Um, who would like, uh, do you all want to break to think about your epilogue or do you want to just dive right in? Let's take like a three minute break. And we'll come back and dive in. Who would like to epilogue first? I will start because at the end of this encounter, um, I think that you would have to pick her up off the floor and Aiden and Jakob would help me down the tower stairs. And when I hit the bottom of the stairs, I just look back at the two of them and say, uh, I'm going to need a little time. In fact, I think I have too much of it. Do I, or not enough? I'll, I'll be fine, but um, you two cannot follow. And I'll just open the door leading out of the ton, ton, uh, ton, Tower of London and step through into that inky blackness. And it closes behind me and the door turns blue and then back to whatever color it was before. Um, we might see as viewers uh, Victoria opening a, a closet door in the uh, chambers of the man in the sun mask in his palace 
palatial little, like just literally across the street or what have you. <laughs> um, and silently and without words, she will just curl up um, on the chaise and quietly cry. Aiden's epilogue will be pretty simple. Uh, I think we'll see him wandering back to Hargrave House, maybe uh, with Jakob. But when he gets there, he'll make a big show of, I'm going to turn in for the night. Big, big day. And uh, as soon as Jakob's out of line of sight, he's going to head to the basement where... Uh, there will be damp footprints leading out from a sewer grate. And he'll say, so I, I think we had a deal? And then cut to black. Very good, very good. Um, we see Lady Florence uh, strolling about on Venus. Um, she has been given a palace that is the size of the city center of London. It's massive. It's huge. Um, and she spends a few weeks. We see a few weeks of her exploring the palace. Uh, it's something new that has been constructed. Um, and But we also see her increasingly getting bored. Um, and as she's walking about... Um, the central city of Venus, uh, she finds the, the remnants of that portal um, that once took her to Mars. Um, and we see her starting to tinker with it uh, to get it somehow operational. Perhaps uh, some of the black magic uh, from Victoria has rubbed off uh, some of the ingenuity of Dom and uh, Jakob as well. And well, just the Martian connection with Jakob. Uh, and she manages to get it functioning and she passes through. Um, it no longer goes to the surface of Mars, though. It goes to an asteroid, a rock that's orbiting the planet. Uh, and we see her sitting there. She's petting a little piglet. Uh, and she's saying, we will need water. We will need blood. And we will need the queen. Yeah, very nice. Um, there's sort of a montage of Jakob strolling the streets of London, gradually getting more comfortable in his Martian skin, occasionally physically walking about revealing his or portions of his true form, like, you know, fingers duplicated, legs duplicated. Every now and then he he passes by a Venusian propaganda poster, uh, catches a glimpse of that robot 127 and still walking with a limp down some London street and kind of cracks his knuckles in anticipation of a future confrontation. And then he's back at Hargrave House, relaxed, you know, all 20 fingers holding up a, a tiny teacup. And he looks over at the what's sitting on the edge of the kitchen sink um just as as Aiden has left is about to leave the room and says two teacups for you and looks at his quantity of fingers and the quantity of teacups and at Aiden's physique and just sort of you know strokes his his Martian chin for a moment thinking about uh what's going on here in Hargrave House. Very good. Let's go to the dawn. Rewards. Are there rewards on this? There are indeed. Um, I will clip this into your chat here. Got some witchy rewards. A rosary made of tiny animal skulls and finger bones. A copy of the sixth and seventh books of Moses, a grimoire, uh, or a memento from the investigation. Who wants what?
And I have the sleigh pulled by cats. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of the sleigh pulled by cats. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I have to say, oh, I, nice. I have a drawing here of a block to carve that is Santa pulling a sleigh of reindeer. <laughs> it is 100% going to get changed to be a witch pulling a sleigh, or rather cats pulling a sleigh with a witch running past the Tower of London. I already know I'm going to alter this block. <laughs> Uh, so I actually was 100% joking, but now that I know that I'm going to get real <laughs> life art, uh, let's, I'll take the grimoire. Mm. Okay. play. I think Lady Florence was making the rosary um, with her oh, little yeah. rat exercise. <laughs> so um, I'm either give, maybe, I don't know, Jakob, if you want that, maybe it's a final, it's a parting gift um before she leaves otherwise i'll take it Ooh, if it's a parting gift from from lady florence what does it look like like it's bones but a like... rosary made of rat skulls and rat finger bones yeah, I read that part. or late oh it's it's fucking sally no faces fingers finger bones <laughs> it's really demented i like that a rosary made of sally no faces fingers and it symbolizes um uh, that sort of coming of age, developing skill, and a sort of the the sort of sinister side of skill um, that it allows you to do um, terrible things in um, the name of good. This is how yeah. I have explained it to you in some way. Thanks for always supporting me, Mom. You're a, mm -hmm. a treasure and a delight as always. Mm -hmm. So then you need a memento, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Uh, I will go with uh, let's after that how could I not ask Mike for the memento um oh the other part of it the bones went to the rosary um but to show how much I appreciate you coming here to try and um, rebuild your pelt, um, I have stitched together a beautiful um, rat pelt stall for you. Um, it's it's more symbolic than useful. I think I have a memento for Mike if you want it, because you know you gave the rosary, right? So, Lady Florence, I think that you find an unexploded Green Goblin gas module thing. <laughs> like, it's in London. It's just an unexploded mine, essentially. <laughs> That's better than the idea that I, that I had. It was a uh, family portrait commissioned by, uh, or front rather, commissioned from James McNeil Whistler. But I like the unexploded ordinance. Uh, very good. Uh, yeah, the, the ordinance is just like it's just a sack of like a sack of herbs and other strange things. Hmm. Uh, very good. Dawn questions. Um, you did answer a question and you did resolve a threat, so everyone's getting those too. Uh, echoes of the night. Uh, is not a factor. Uh, today. However, um, Lady Florence, did you leverage your social status to gain the upper hand? Yes, you did. Did you have a face-to-face -face encounter with the mastermind? Yes, you did. Good XP day for Lady Florence. Uh, Ms. Bilacqua, did you perform a ritual? Yes, you did. Did you have a face-to-face -face encounter with a dark entity? Yes, you did. Jakob. I maxed out on advancement, but carry on if you wish. Oh, I'm curious. Did you charmingly embarrass yourself in front of a potential love interest? Um, I don't think so, but... Nope, you had to throw some love interests at me. Yeah, I guess so. I, I didn't even realize that was a thing. Um, did you go on and on about your bucolic life back home? Uh, in a way, you kind of did. Uh, the whole, like, Welsh uh, name business. Uh, you mean John the Butterfish Klingish? <laughs> yes, that one. I'm just um, that one, yeah. Aiden, did you delight in uncovering lost, forgotten, or ancient magic? Uh, I would say so. Uh, did you assert your independence or stand up for yourself? That's what I was going for with the uh, uh, 
getting the witch. Yeah, yeah, indeed. So, okay, very good. And one note, and I think this may just be a note for Aiden. I don't think we actually checked XP from last session. I think we had to end soon because um, I was looking at everyone's boxes and we had stuff boxed off, but we had did not. Um, it didn't match uh, on anyone's things. And I think that that so was the case that we were going to like come back and answer those questions. During so, the day, we yeah. answered a question on the figs pigs because we could answer that question during the day. And then we resolved the threat. But yeah. was that oh. pre-Obert or post-Obert? I, I can't recall. I mean, we did do a night phase last time. Um mm. And a dawn. I'm not sure about the XP situation. It's really only for Aiden to figure out yeah. because the rest yeah. of you don't really have any advancements you can do anymore. So, um, so I had marked four uh, questions as answered positively from last session. So I did just roll them into XP. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Very These good. Are today's. All right. Sounds good. Uh, cool. I don't think we have any open Janus mask, and so... Sorry about that. <laughs> Motorcycle, like, sounds like it's right outside my window. Um, and so in that case, we shall wrap up with stars and wishes with our last remaining bits of time. I'll start today. Um, I really... I had a great time today. I, I thought the fight with the witches was really fun. I really... I One thing I really liked about this version of the coven and just this version of like witches as a pop culture thing or as a thing in 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 culture i like that these witches were just fucking evil there was like no there was no uh, it wasn't like a commentary on feminism which is often what witches tend to be in fiction and it wasn't there was no attempt to like make their motives like morally gray or complicated like there's not they're just fucking evil they're just evil witches and they their whole thing is uh we love satan so much that we're gonna like we're gonna we're gonna we're, we love the devil so much we're gonna do all we're gonna destroy london for the devil right because we we, we because we believe in the devil so strongly um and so i just really liked that I really like that. I liked, you know, there, there's just something about their just, you know, their uncompromising evil that was just quite enjoyable and fun uh, as the keeper to play. Um, I mean, you don't you don't want every threat to be that way, but gosh, it was they, they were fun to play that way, so I, I enjoyed that. Um, I thought the answer a question was really fascinating today uh, because this uh, this particular uh, question in the game is definitely one of the more like bizarre ones to to explore. The, the other one is probably the Waitley camera. They're like the two like kind of weirdest and they're the biggest ask in terms of like creativity from the group. But I really thought that we got to some, you know, a cool story because of it. So I was really happy with that. Uh, star for, there's a lot of stars in the chat today. Um, I particularly give a star for, uh, I, uh, I see a blue door and I want to paint it black. I don't know who said that, but that was really funny. Um, and, um, uh, what were some other things that happened? Uh, I, re I really, I guess it's a star for me. I don't know, but I really like the, um, when Mike said, I've been to Venus, I've been to Mars and in the chat I said, but I haven't been to me. Um, and then uh, I just thought that was funny. Uh, there's there's a lot of little moments like that in chat today. Um, Star for 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 Aiden and the Witch. Really love that. Great plot twist. It really really sets up the future of the campaign. So I really I really enjoyed that a lot. Um, it's becoming almost like a joke of like storing things in the basement of Hargrave House, uh, which is not even a basement. It's just a series of like, it's a series of like tunnels and caves under the house. It's not like, we keep calling it a basement. It's not a basement. <laughs> but, uh, but I think it's funny that that, that keeps being a thing. Um, uh, love the final confrontation between Sally and uh, Lady Florence. That was loads of fun to play. Um, I also quite liked uh, Star for like, that sort of weird dawning realization that that little scene at the end with Jakob of like wondering what is up with Aiden with the teacups. I thought that was really good. Very, very cool moment. Um, uh, but I think the biggest star goes to, to Sarah today because, you know, this threat was so, so, so tied to, to Ms. Balakwa. This really, truly felt like the sort of the, 
the the finale from his Balakwa in some sense, right? So uh, much like it was uh, with the Wolf King last time with Mr. Constantine. So uh, just to start for how you played all that, told the stories you told. I thought that I particularly thought that last Janus mask was really, really affecting and kind of really tied it all together in a really cool way. Um, so yeah, just good times all around um, as far as that goes. And then wishes, uh, you know, I'm very curious to see how this, what this final conflict is gonna look like. I've got a couple months to think about it. Um, I, I, I actually, I actually quite like that it's going to take place either on Venus or in space or not in London, because it sort of makes it easy to, if we pick up the campaign for season two, it makes it easy to transition back to London because whatever happens is not going to affect London that way. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm, I like that it's sort of cabined off a little bit in that way. Like the characters apart from Aiden might all just that might be it. They may never get back to London for all we know, right? That might be it for them. So um, I like the idea of Aiden getting back somehow and just living in Hargrave House with his witch and then <laughs> and then some other hunters show up eventually. Uh, so that could be fun. But yeah, I think those are my, my stars and wishes. That can happen. Um... I have a lot. I'm gonna do a fraction of them. Uh, I love the the idea of the thralls with tattoos as programming to let them know when the time is right. That really resonated with me. Uh, and Mike had remarked that the blue blood flows back to the heart. Just really picturesque. I feel like honestly, all four of us with our mook dreams at the opening. I thought all those dreams were were phenomenal. They were really good. Yeah, they were great. Uh, yeah, Aiden saving the witch is going to have so much more plot uh, revelations later. The imagery of a carriage pulled by cats flying past the tower or towards the Tower of London. Uh, oh my God, it's just gorgeous. And then, uh, Sarah, you were just off the charts with the, the sort of uh, revelation. Well, I've lost my page here. Um, uh, in exchange, I'll give you everything I have if you will take this from me. Everything that followed from that was just breathtaking. I'm happy to jump in from there just like echoing that point to kind of snake backwards um I th and you also like tying that so intricately into the sort of like coming of age and uh parents and children themes and what all of that means like uh was really cool I mean we talked about really early on in this campaign like how is the sort of like witchy magic stuff going to work with the science fantasy like science fiction -y alien invasion stuff and I think that like yeah I mean the point that I had in the chat as well is like there's a lot of like the characters are dealing with some real shit um and it's all like very intertwined even though like these threats generally play out in these very like pulpy it's pulpy um, yeah yeah ways um yeah just all of the imagery there just like extremely came to a head i probably just going to plus one a lot of things here <laughs> plus one to the whole thing with aiden on the on the beach uh even and yeah the the imagery of the the thralls there as well um a lot of even though there wasn't necessarily echoes in the night like a lot of like little callbacks and little details that made this like feel like there were a lot of motifs running through uh both like the the episode on it on its own as well as like the the bigger thing uh the bigger themes um it was fun to get back and talk to Jasad again. <laughs> um, so central to uh, Lady Florence that that was a fun scene. And um, yeah, I I think wishes here is I'm really excited to see what the what a final uh, scenario mastermind scenario looks like i've not seen one of those yet so or experienced one of those yet so that'll be new to this me and i'm a really different one too so <laughs> like, yeah it should be this is not like theodora out of brathwaite hall like this is, you know, mm. this is something really quite different yeah so um yeah i'm really excited to dig into that i can go next um to start at the top um the first interactions Aiden your like 
Ben, your interjection of Aiden's just actual naive questions of like, oh, well, what's that? Why why do you want that? Because that was, and it just like, through your naivete, calling it right on the nose every time, even with the stupid, like, sheep is the answer to some questions, kind of literal mindedness. It also gave the rest of us um, some scenery to chew on, uh, so to speak, and be uncomfortable about. So I thought that that was just really on point today. I also really liked your um, kind of like Ghibli-esque sort of start to your dream. As soon as you said that you were surrounded by pigs in a restaurant, I'm thinking, um, spirited away. So it was like that vibe into the darker waters of that dream. Very good. Um, the rat shucking Lady Florence, like you are going off the rails and it is beautiful to watch. <laughs> um, just the rest of us also being kind of fine with it is a really vi- like an interesting vibe in Hargrave House too. Well, that's just how she de-stresses. She doesn't knit. She doesn't do Rubik's cubes. She just shucks rats. So. Um, that kind of like toxicity that you're channeling, like you're not exploring. And because you're not driving something forward, you're just spinning your wheels in the most destructive way possible. And it's coming through real clean and um, sharp for at least me as the viewer. So I love that. Um, uh, God, what else? A star for my aunts being vaporized, gutted, and I guess in a series of catacombs into the sewers underneath London, or maybe erased from time, depending on how all of that kind of plays out. I guess we'll have to see. I I really enjoyed uh, the wrap up to the coven. This has been a long time coming for her, like Victoria as a character. And I think my favorite part about the between to this day is the way that the character arc I experience it as a player that echoes both forward and backward and so that tipping point in which you know who your character is and you have to explain why they are who they are really became clear for me with Victoria back with the lurker like that little vampire kid freaked Victoria out a lot. And there was a reason for that. And for that to come full circle, that whole mummy thing with the dark spirits puppeting the child and her really complicated feelings about that backfilling some of that stuff Mm -hmm. today was so satisfying Mm -hmm. that I probably will play this game forever. (laughs) Um, so a huge star to the designer. <laughs> uh, what else? I think that as far as wishes go, I think that space is going to be interesting and fun. I want to know if Victoria can do some funny time stuff now, if that helps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If we can actually just unplug Jazad from reality or not. We turn him off and on again. Um I think that uh, it's going to be very fun to kind of see how this, like, it's the same kind of epic finale you want to a television show, right? Like, this is the penultimate episode, and now we're going to get to that, like, Christmas special (laughs) big finale. And I'm just really excited to see it. Yeah, there's uh, not much I could say. I did write down and make a note when you revealed your final mask of the past, Sarah, and it was like, oh, that that explains the lurker uh, scene, and it was really just brilliant. Uh, everything with Victoria today was was great. Um, also, a star for uh, I really like how Lady Florence is. We're seeing her unravel a little, but there's still this obvious affection toward Jakob and Jakob's goals. And I also like as the new member of Hargrave House, uh, Aiden's having a completely different experience than Jakob did because Lady Florence is in a very different place. And that's uh, that's really interesting and cool to see. Uh, and Jakob cluing into some, perhaps some broad similarities between how he and Aiden have approached issues is interesting and surely won't be a problem in the future uh also yeah just this whole session the the way it was paced the way everybody 
uh, dealt with all the things put in front of them and the way you painted all the scenes jason was excellent uh, i think probably one of if not the best like threat resolution we've done yet and also there's a lot of fun doing the answer question kind of in character and getting that uh which is very different from how we normally do it and it was fun wishes uh i really like the idea of wrapping it up with kind of a christmas special um that that is a good good bookend um i almost wish maybe uh maybe instead of aiden going on this space adventure someone tracks down old dom yeah i was wondering that too i actually had a similar thought like there's something there's something appealing about the idea of aiden like aiden was never really part of this group right like so aiden's got what aiden wants out of it and just stays and never knows what happens to the others i think that actually is more fitting and appropriate so yeah, that might be fun. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, and it's very Christmas special. It is. Yeah, it is indeed. Yeah, the 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 the, the beloved you know character returns you know or whatever. Uh, and also that's good. Home. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I will say that uh, I I really have loved. Um, I I oh, I had a thought. No, but I, I just lost my train of thought. God damn it. That's, you said something though that made me I wanted to comment on Ben and now I've forgotten but um, well so I'll just say are there any more stars and wishes okay well um, that was a really fun session uh, and we are going on our break now for a couple of months we'll come back and see what this final confrontation with Jazad looks like and who's there for the final confrontation with Jazad. And yeah, I think I think it's gonna be a lot to look forward to. This has been quite an epic campaign so far and we've had so many good moments. So give these characters a good send off. Um, in that case, let's go ahead and wave goodbye to people watching the video. Bye.